so easy it's asking how can I make my emails more effectively so just in case uh, if you if you missed the earlier ones we do email marketing because we want to grow sales we do email marketing we want because we want to get closer to our customers uh, our prospects right without being salesy without being aggressive and without being a nuisance so in order to do that we then obviously need to add value and communicate uh, what we do, communicate how we can help them, and communicate the uh, the benefits or the outcome of using our products or services. All right. So, in a nutshell, that's what it is. So, if you want to make your emails more effective uh, to close sales, here are the fundamentals. Okay, Kevin, I'm going to block this off so that we can get more space, and we'll move this little mug face lower here. Okay. So. Let's start with let's start with let's start with this. Okay. In order for you to get more sales, obviously, right? Uh, the basic principle is you have to talk to the right audience. Okay, I think this is pretty obvious, right? So if you're gonna sell uh, let's say an IT product or IT security products, for example, you need to know or you need to speak to the person who is responsible for this. If you speak to, let's say, a salesperson, although they work in an organization and they are nevertheless affected by a, an IT security case or situation or customer data breach or whatever it is, but they are not the right people, right? So you need to then target the right audience. So if I'm doing email marketing, I need to speak to people who are either doing email marketing or looking at it, all responsible for marketing, specifically in the email part. But if I speak to somebody who is doing, let's say, media buying for Facebook ads and all those things, then my email marketing pitch or message may not resonate with them. So right audience is the first thing you need to get through. Second thing is... Once you get the right audience, you then need to write, have the right content that addresses their pain or problems. Uh, I'm, run, I'm running short of space to write. Okay, let me reduce this to be smaller. Okay, let's extend here. And you agitate the problem Okay, or the pain that if they don't take an action, for example, either buy your services or do something, then it will become worse in maybe a short period of time or long period of time. You know, for example, let's say if you don't do email marketing as part of your, let's say, B2B business, you're going to lose out to your competitors. Why? Because your competitors are communicating on a daily basis or weekly basis to your prospects or your customers while you are not. And people may forget you over time. Okay, so that's one. So once you have agitated the pain, then you need to then provide the solution, which is why uh, the prospect should do business with you. Okay, so if you notice this is what they call it, the PAS method of copywriting, right? Problem, agitate, and solution. Okay, so once you have done the right content, then you have to, uh, let me see, you have to have the right offer. Okay, I'm writing this down because just in case I forget because I get nervous when I go online. Um, so you have to have the right offer. Okay, so the right audience, the right content, and then the right offer. Okay, and then the other part is the affordability. B I L L I. Okay, I'm going to go slow today. All right, it's a new year. I'm going to go slow today. L I T U I. Right now, affordability is now. While you may not be responsible for whether the prospects can afford your services or not, all right. Uh, you know, you value your pricing, you value your product or services according to what you think. But generally speaking, you are not responsible for the prospects' affordability. But your responsibility is to then demonstrate that your price is lower than the value or the outcome that you're going to offer. All right. So if I say you pay me a hundred bucks and I'm going to give you like 110 in return for sales or whatever it is, is a very uh, low price versus value proposition. But if I say if you pay me a hundred bucks and I can generate you maybe a million or a hundred thousand or whatever it is, then your price 
no longer becomes an issue because it is lower than, significantly lower than your value. So now you have this. Okay, so right audience. Okay, let me mark this. Right audience, right content and offer that addresses specifically the pain or problems. All right, you have to do that because otherwise they won't know. All right, they don't know which area that that you your products or services are uh, you know are solving. Then you obviously you make the right offer. Oh, one more thing. This is important also at the right time. Okay, and then finally, then there's a pricing issue, which is the affordability. Now, when I say the right time here, is you notice if you are on my list, uh, in I generally email almost on a daily basis. Okay, that means five days in a week, and every day is a different topic depending on whatever offers I make or whether uh, the education content that I provide. But generally speaking, I write often to my list. Now, that is because people have different needs at different times. So if today, if I'm talking about email marketing, it may not be come across as being important to you. But in a week, uh, let's say in a week's down the line, your marketing boss may call you and says, hey, we noticed that one of the components is missing from our marketing mix and it's called email marketing. Can we do something about this? Now, you're triggered to actually find solution for it. Okay, but if I continue to email you on this subject, you know, throughout the week, then eventually my message will then uh, resonate with you because that's where you're looking at. Otherwise, you may not. Okay, so right offer and the right time in terms of number of emails you send and the frequency of emails you send is important. For B2B, they are kind of reluctant generally to send on a daily basis. So I would normally recommend on a weekly basis at the very least. If you can do two times or three times a week, great. But then it all depends on the audience. Okay, So certain group of audience, for example, they don't like too many emails. And certain group of audience, they welcome. So also, it boils back to the content you share. If your content is uh, very salesy in general, then yes, people would definitely mark or bin your emails into spam. So you need to start with value. Okay. So why am I leaving this first portion empty? Now, this is the important segment that a lot of us, myself included, at one point, we actually miss. Once I've got the right audience and the right content and the right offer, in order for me to get the right audience, I need to hand have, for example, whatever I do, let's say lead magnets, okay, or My attraction mechanism, okay? Uh, the stuff that will attract the right audience into here, okay? So when I started doing this uh, or, you know, building my list about two years ago when I got into this business, okay? I was generally running, inviting people to join my newsletter if you're interested in email marketing because I'm going to offer tips and hacks and all six. But if you notice, email marketing is very general, okay? So even then, uh, some of them are email marketing for e-commerce. Some of them are interested in email marketing B2B or B2C. So there are niches between. So in order for you to do this and to get all this right, you then need to identify within your niche. Narrow niche, okay? Each of these audience. Okay? So for example, I just uh, chatting with my client uh, about half an hour, an hour ago. Uh, she has several products um, that uh, several services. She has a consulting uh, business, and each of the business address different part of uh, each of the products or service addresses different part of the business. So, it is important to have different set of link magnets for each of these niche. And once you do this, for example, let's say in my money targeting the CFO or finance uh, people, so my link magnet must call out specifically to this group. And once I have that, can I change the color? Once I have that, then when I flow here, I've got the right audience. I'm going to talk about the right content related to the finance or CFO space. I'm going to make an offer at the right time to them. And then the offer must be, you know, ROI positive, all right? Or the, the whatever you do must be, the outcome must be measurable. And then you then have a sale. Now, the process here may take one week. Or, in my case, let me share with you. Today, I just received an email from uh, a member from our list. And they have, uh, they have been a subscriber since February 20, 2022. 
right? Technically from January, that means they've been with me for more than a year. Only today, after uh, I calculated about 258 emails that I sent, only today they decided to reply back and request for a meeting. Okay. So to, if you're wondering how long does it take, yes, it can be as quick as one week and it can be as long as a year because it's the right timing and the right people. Okay, uh, That is, email is a long game. It's not like ads where you place ads, you get response or you get people to reply because uh, your ad creative is good. right? It's not that, but the beauty is you're keeping uh, in touch with the customer throughout and you're showing them that you're showing up almost every day or almost every week. Uh, and when the time is right, then it becomes easier. The sales naturally becomes easier as long as you have the right offer, right time, and it's affordable to the customer. Okay? Hi, and thanks for watching. If you need my help to set up your email marketing engine for your business, just click on the link here and you see a list of services that will help you grow your leads and sales and also increase your profits through emails. I'm looking forward to working with you soon.